Hi, I'm Bev McCullough of Flamingo Toes, and I am so excited to be here with you today to sew up these pretty patchwork Christmas pillows. So we have two patchworks here. One is a Christmas tree and one is a present. They make a really sweet set and they are so fun to sew. They're great for beginners or experts. Anybody can make these. They are made with my Christmas adventure fabric that's out right now. And the background is a really cute bee cross stitch print from Lori Holt and you can make them with a fat quarter or you could a bundle, a little fat quarter bundle, or you can make them with um, jelly roll leftovers. They're perfect for a scrappy project. So we're going to get started first on the present pillow and I'm gonna show you how easy and fun these are to make. Okay, so we are going to start with making a nine patch. And I have a fun and easy way to make a nine patch. So you're going to need little two and a half inch squares for each portion of the present. And so I'm gonna lay out my two and a half inch squares in my nine patch grid, just like this. And this is a fun project that you can even use directional fabrics with because as you're placing them together, you can make sure that they're facing up the right direction so you don't have to shy away from those and you don't have to worry about as you sew them up them being crooked or upside down or anything like that. So we've laid out the nine patch here and I'm just gonna show you my quick easy method for sewing these together so that they, your blocks are easy to keep together. So I'm going to take the first and second blocks in my first row and I'm gonna place them right sides together. I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance for everything and we're just gonna go ahead and sew and we're not going to clip our threads at the end. We're going to chain piece this little section together. So I'm going to go ahead and stop and pick up row two, the first two pieces, and we're just gonna keep going. And the fun thing about this method is it keeps your block pieces all together. I use this even when I'm piecing together a large block with multiple pieces. It just keeps everything tidy. You don't have to worry about a block accidentally being upside down and it just makes it so much easier. So we've done the same thing for row three. We're sewing together all of the first two blocks. So I'm gonna lay those out so you can see they are now all sewn together. Row one, two, and three. So now we're gonna do the exact same thing with row, with this third section. And we're gonna sew the first two, the first row together. And again, we're not cutting our threads. And then we're gonna open up the second row and add this block. And this is so fun to do scrappy. You can even cut your pieces from leftover projects from Christmas quilts that you've made. And then you could have coordinating pillows that match your quilts. So then we're going to sew this last row piece on and go ahead and cut our threads. And now we have all three rows of our nine patch sewn together and ready for pressing. They make it really easy and fun. So you can see it's all held together and all of my directional pieces are still the right direction. So we're gonna go ahead and press this and we're going to press the first row with the seams to the outside, the middle row with the seams to the inside and then the last row with the seams to the outside so that we can nest our pieces together. So I will show you that in just a second. We're just pressing to the outside and then the middle row is in and then the last row is to the outside. And it makes it really easy when you go to sew together this block to nest those seams and then your seams match up perfectly and your squares all look great. So all you have to do when you sew the, the nine patch together is layer these over. I have some really cute tins here that have um, some little clips and these make perfect clips for holding your pieces and making sure you're lining them up while you're doing this. So then you can kind of remove that and sew row one to row two and those little chain piecing threads hold your block in place and make it really easy to line up those seams. So we're sewing this row and we go ahead and cut at the end. And again, quarter inch 
seams for all of these. And then we can flip the block. You can see we've sewn the bottom two rows together. And those, because our, our little chain piecing threads held everything together, everything's the right direction. So now we're going to place this row on top here. We're going to line up those nested seams again. And then we're gonna sew. And you can sew row two to row three first, or row one to row two, it doesn't matter because it's all held together. So all of your rows are going to be the right direction no matter which row you sew together first. So now our nine patch is all sewn and you can see how easy it was to nest those seams and have our seams be perfectly lined up. So then you can take your block over to your iron and you can press your seams towards the center. Or if you're feeling like there's a lot of bulk, you can press your seams open. It's really up to you, whatever works best for you. So then you have a very cute little nine patch all ready for assembly in our pillow. So I'm gonna show you how to sew those together. You will have pieces cut that are the center ribbon portion of the pillow. And you will sew these together with a nine patch on either side. And that block looks like this once you sew it together. It's so easy and fun. And you will repeat and do that for a second row. And this forms the top and bottom of the present. You'll add a ribbon sash here in the middle between your rows. And that forms the body of the present. And then you can start working on the bow. So we will be doing a stitch and flip with this cute little bow for the top of our present. So all you need to do for that is it helps to have a marking pen and to draw a diagonal line on the wrong side of your background fabric. And I can show you how to do that here. All you have to do is line up your ruler with your diagonal line with the diagonal side of the, of the square and then just go ahead and draw a nice line here. And you're gonna sew right on that line. So you're gonna place it right sides together with a print piece and you're gonna sew. And once you sew, then you're going to place your ruler on here so that the quarter inch lines up with the seam and you're going to trim off that excess. And once you do that, you will, you're gonna make two of those. So you'll have two cute little half square triangles. And these are so quick and easy to do. So once you have your two half square triangles, you're gonna assemble the top portion of your present. So you want to turn it so that they are a bow sort of direction like this so that it looks like a bow. And you're gonna have background pieces. All your piecing sizes and everything that you need to cut is going to be linked in the video description so you can find out all the information on how to cut all these pieces. But the top of your bow of your present will be pieced together just like this. And that is all there is to piecing the center portion of your bow. What of your present. Once you have that all together, then you can add in your borders. So you're gonna add a background border on either side, just like this, and that sews on really quickly. The, the side border is a little wider than the top and bottom border because our present is a little bit tall. So we want to make sure it fits squarely. So then you add the bottom border of the background, and then I added a cute print border to the sides. Now this pillow finishes 24 inches, and if you feel like that's really big for you, you can stop at this point and have a 20 inch pillow. It would look just as cute, but I like the little pop of color on the sides so that you can see that extra little pop of pink. And it would be cute with any, you could find any coordinating print that would work well with your fabrics or if you have a color scheme in your house that you're using, you could use that color scheme for the sides to just tie in with your other um, decorations for Christmas. So once you sew your borders on your, your pillow top, that takes care of the present pillow. And so now we're going to set, clear this away and we're going to start our tree pillow that makes a perfect match to this one. So. 
So now we're going to work on our Christmas tree pillow. And if you have already made the Christmas present pillow, this is going to be a breeze for you. In the other tutorial, I showed you how to do a stitch and flip block, and we're going to do that same method, just a little bit smaller with two and a half inch blocks. So it's the exact same thing. You're going to draw a diagonal line and you're going to sew on that line. Then you're going to cut one quarter of an inch away and trim off that extra. And then you're going to piece that together with more scrappy two and a half inch pieces. So your blocks are going to look like this. They're going to have a number of two and a half inch pieces in the middle and then cute half square triangle blocks on each end. And you're going to do that for every row of our pretty tree pillow. And this goes together so easily. The first row is just two half square triangles and we have quite a bit of background fabric. Each row is going to be the same width. So we're going to have different lengths of background fabric as we add more two and a half inch pieces in between. So, and all those fabric measurements are in the link in the video description. So this is row two. It has one two and a half inch block in here and then the two half square triangles and a little bit less background fabric. And you can see that as we add more two and a half inch pieces in here, that background fabric goes down a little bit. And you repeat all those same steps with every row to make your really cute little tree. So each row comes together with just a little bit of background fabric, less and less. So the last row doesn't have any background fabric on the sides because we're lining everything up. And we always have leftover two and a half inch strips from our roly poly. So this pieces together really well with those and you can make cute uh, matching pillows to your quilts. So once you have all of your tree pieces sewn together, your trunk piece goes together really easily with a contrasting two and a half inch piece of fabric. I used my little red Christmas lights and then you need background fabric as well. So that is your whole tree block. So once you have all that done, then you can start adding your border pieces and the borders go on just like they do, did with the present block. You're going to sew two side border pieces of your cute background fabric and then you're going to sew your top and bottom. I mixed these up. <laughs> So we're going to sew these on first, your sides first, and then your top and bottom will go together like this. And because I wanted my pillows to look like a set, I used the same border print on the sides so that they looked good together. But if you're just making one, feel free to change up your fabrics and use any prints you would like on the side borders. So this one goes down here. And this one goes over here. And so once you piece all your borders together, then you have your tree top. And then you can start assembling your cute pillows. So with mine, I made um, a little bit of sashiko stitching around the side before I quilted the quilt. So I added a little bit of detail stitching. I did this with my baby lock sashiko machine, but you can do it with a hand stitching as well. It's just a simple running stitch. I would use probably three strands of floss to do it if you're doing it by hand. I did it by machine and so I just used regular 50 weight Aurifil for it. And I just added a little bit of detailing and I feel like it really makes the block pop. So once I did my extra stitching on here, then I went ahead and layered it together with a piece of batting and a background fabric, and which doesn't really, you can use anything for that. Scrap pieces are great. If you have a little bit of muslin or, or just a little bit of white solid that you have, it's not gonna show, but it makes it nice and puffy for your quilt if you have that background fabric there. And so then I went ahead and quilted it with an all over meandering quilting pattern. Now, I love to add pom-pom trim to almost anything. If you've seen any of my other projects, I do a lot of hoop embroidery and pillows and things like that. Almost all of them have pom-pom trim on them, so I do like to add that. This is a really fun red, and I like how it really makes the reds in the blocks pop. So if you want to add something like that, you can sew it on before you sew your back on your pillow. So once you're done with all your quilting, cut your pieces of trim and you're going to sew your pom-pom trim when you sew it on with the pom-poms in towards the center of your pillow top. That way when you turn your pillow right side out, the pom-pom trim goes out towards the bottom and sticks out all the way around. So you're going to sew your pom-pom trim along the edge of your whole quilt top, your pillow top, after you quilt it. 
and then you're ready to assemble your back. And I usually do an envelope back on my pillows. These are very fun and I like to change out my pillows for the seasons. I'm fickle that way. <laughs> so I like the ease of just slipping this off the pillow form and being able to change it out for Halloween or Easter or anything like that. So all you need to do is cut your two pieces of fabric and you hem the top fabric, you hem the bottom piece with just turning under your fabric twice and doing a straight stitch. And the bottom piece of fabric, you hem the top piece. And the envelope is perfect for directional fabrics because you can have a really cute pillow, you know, with all of your cute designs on the back and it ties it in together. So you layer your top and bottom piece face down on your work surface and you put the top one on top of the bottom one and you make sure that together they measure the, the top of your pillow. So our pillows are 24 inches, so your pieces, top and bottom, measure a 24 inch square. Then you can place your pillow top right sides together with the backing fabric and sew around all four sides. You don't have to leave an opening with this kind of method, which I love. <laughs> so once you have your top sewn to your pillow back, you can clip the corners to cut down on bulk and turn them right side out. And I have a really handy tool for making sure that your pillow corners are nice and sharp. My Flamingo Stiletto is perfect for that. So once you turn it right side out, you can slip this in and push it into the corners. It's not so sharp that it's gonna push through your fabric, but up against that seam, it's just gonna make so you have a nice corner at your pillows. And you can do that with all four seams all four corners and once you do that then you can press and insert your pillow form so then you have your cute new pillow on your couch to show off and you can have both as a set these make a great gift as well these would look so cute in any christmas collection i have them in christmas adventure but they'd be great in any other collection or any of the riley blake basics as well you can find me at flamingotoes.com and flamingotoes on Instagram. I would love for you to come check me out there. Don't forget you can find all the instructions in today's description. And thanks so much for tuning in.